you've been investigating failures to report child sexual abuse in schools, and I was doing a broader story about why does this seem to keep happening? Because there'd been a number of cases in Indiana in which school officials found out that another school official was having an inappropriate relationship with a student and yet didn't immediately report it to authorities as required by Indiana law. And so while I'm doing this story about why does this seem to keep happening, I had a source say, you really need to look at USA Gymnastics and how they handle these allegations. My law firm ultimately was the firm that provided the tip to the Indianapolis Star, and that was a result of work we've been doing since 2008 or seven. My husband had basically given up trying to do anything with trying to get more traction for what we knew were like piles of complaints against coaches. He's known about the cover-ups and everything that happens with the coaches just getting moved around if they get caught. I've talked to the FBI in Milwaukee, Seattle. They've come to my office in Indianapolis. I've gone to the Southern District of New York. I've talked to their human trafficking division in DC. I have gone to the Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department more times than I can count. Like, they do not care. We were had been working on a um, some gymnastics cases with a lawyer in Georgia. He called us one morning and said, hey, you've got to get down to Georgia. USA Gymnastics just filed something and they forgot to seal it and it's got all of the complaints in it. We were just about to leave the country so neither of us could get down to Georgia to get it. And finally, I just said, well, let me just text this reporter that I met from the Indy Star, who was Marissa. So much of that day was just a scramble to figure out how do we get access to this information before it may not be public. Ultimately, what we found out was some of the records had already been sealed, but not all of them. We realized that there was no other way to get them quickly without me going there in person, that my editors approved me getting on a plane and flying to Georgia that same day. So when I flew to Georgia, I picked up almost a thousand pages of records and included in those records were pieces of depositions from current and former USA Gymnastics officials in which they described what their policy for handling child sexual abuse allegations was. You are the president of USA Gymnastics. If you receive a complaint of sexual misconduct, do you turn it over to local authorities? No. The next step was finding out the impact of that policy on the safety of kids in the sport. We divided up maybe 100 to 150 coaches that we knew had been in trouble, uh, with gymnastic coaches who had had sexual abuse cases against them. We found four coaches where we had definitive proof that they'd been reported to USA Gymnastics, USA Gymnastics had failed to take action, and these coaches went on to harm girls. From the, the next point when we got to those four cases, we started talking to some of the survivors. I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking about an interview that I'd sat in on and think most importantly, how do I tell this story in a sensitive, accurate manner that does respect to the issue at hand. As athletes are gathering in Rio, a stunning report from the Indianapolis Star and USA Today Network dominated this day. Within hours, Rachel Den Hollander reached out I was the first person to come forward and publicly speak against Larry Nasser. When IndyStar released their report on the culture of abuse within USA Gymnastics, I knew immediately this is the time. It was the first time there was um, validation, and I knew I wasn't alone. She felt she had an ally in, in our newspaper, in our organization, in the Indianapolis Star, in journalism. I still think about it. It's five years later, I still think about this story and how difficult it was for those women to come forward with their accounts of abuse, how it fractured their home lives, how it fractured their relationships, how it fractured their psyche going forward, how it changed them into different people. We as a society need investigative journalists more than ever. Without that first Indianapolis Star story in August of 2016, without the story where Rachel came forward publicly shortly thereafter, he would still be practicing medicine, treating athletes and abusing kids. 
I, too, was a victim. I didn't understand the magnitude of what all was happening until the Indianapolis Star published its article in the fall of 2016 entitled, Former USA Gymnastics Doctor Accused of Abuse. There's nobody else doing this kind of work. Nobody. That is our passion, is to tell stories of humanity, reveal injustice, right wrongs. All these women come over and they're like, you're my hero. It's like, no, you know, you're the heroes. I, I'm, I'm just a reporter who's doing my job. The media is the only chance for justice in America. Journalism is essential to hold those systems to account. I was lucky enough to attend trainings at Pointer several times earlier in my career. Continuing to build our skill sets is incredibly important, but also being able to connect with others in the industry who are equally passionate about the work that we do and are trying to continue to get better. The service that Pointer provides is something that we desperately need as journalists. 